Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. I chose you from the world to go and bear fruit that will last, says the Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple area. He looked around at everything and since it was already late, went out to Bethany with the twelve. The next day as they were leaving Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing from a distance a fig tree and leaf, he went over to see if he could find anything on it. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves. It was not the time for figs. And he said to it in reply, May no one ever eat of your fruit again. And his disciples heard it. They came to Jerusalem, and on entering the temple area, he began to drive out those selling and buying there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. He did not permit anyone to carry anything through the temple area. Then he taught them, saying, Is it not written? My house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples, but you have made it a den of thieves. The chief priests and the scribes came to hear of it, and they were seeking a way to put him to death. Yet they feared him, because the whole crowd was astonished at his teaching. When evening came, they went out of the city. Early in the morning, as they were walking along, they saw the fig tree withered to its roots. Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look! The fig tree that you cursed has withered. Jesus said to them in reply, Have faith in God. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever says to this mountain, Be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it shall be done for him. Therefore I tell you, all that you ask for in prayer, believe that you will receive it, and it shall be yours. When you stand to pray, forgive anyone against whom you have a grievance, so that your heavenly Father may in turn forgive you your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's first reading from the book of Sirach, we get basically the introduction to one of the most exciting uh, parts of the book of Sirach. There's a number of chapters that recount uh, the heroic stories of many of the heroes of the Old Testament, and they are all recounted by Ben Sirach, right, or Ben Sirach, right, the author of the book of Sirach. And he talks about the glory that all of them earned in their life. And that should bring up a question in us. Do we seek glory? Are we supposed to seek glory? Sometimes in the church we have a mistaken idea of humility and modesty. And we think that we are supposed to be humble, obedient servants to God, right? And not seeking glory. But when you read the lives of the saints, you can actually find that the saints actually thought about things very differently, right? St. Ignatius of Loyola, right? Before his conversion, Uh, He was a man who sought great glory in the army as a great knight. And he realized that he could seek even greater glory through pursuing godliness. And he used to write in his diaries and he used to pray to God. He said, Lord, make me a great saint. He didn't want to just be holy. He didn't want to just be a saint. He wanted to be a saint who would be remembered, earning glory. As Christians, we are not merely supposed to be humble servants. We are supposed to have a grand vision for our life. What are we going to do to earn glory for God and for the church? When we get to heaven, will we be admitted into heaven just out of mere pity on God's behalf to cooperate in that grace and that redemption? to be members of the heavenly city, not because of mere pity, but because we earned glory in the way that we lived in this life. 
the great Christian virtue of magnanimity is significant. Again, one of those words that is very much out of favor in modern English, or sometimes when people use the word magnanimity, they just think of it as like a a generous soul, and that's certainly part of it. But magnanimity means magna anima, greatness of soul. This is a Christian virtue. That all of us recognizing the tremendous dignity that we have that has been bestowed on us, the tremendous call that we have received, all of us should be living magnanimously, asking God, God, make me a great saint. What can I do for your glory? What can I do that will be truly worth remembering? Pray God that all of us one day might be admitted to the heavenly city, but not merely out of pity, that we will have a long trail of glorious deeds that we have performed, of souls that we have saved and converted, that we might live a life worthy of remembering.